Fritz the Jovial and welcome to this episode. Today we are talking about Hogwarts Legacy just came out for PlayStation 5. And uh, the reason we're talking about it, you know what? Let's go upstairs and play the game and then we can talk about it a little bit. So guys, I wanted to do a quick walkthrough this evening, this quiet evening here in Connecticut. Okay, and welcome back to the studio. You got to see a little bit of gameplay. We're going to be switching between there and here so that I can show you gameplay up there and talk about it down here. Now, the reason we're talking about it today is I don't usually do video game reviews. And I have been a gamer in uh, the most uh, liberal of the use of the word gamer. And um, I love uh, driving games and first person shooters and role playing. Uh, you know, um, and as far as telling a story, getting immersed in an environment, and. Uh, just the intricate detail and the graphics of these environments in this game, which is Hogwarts Legacy, the brand new, brand new game. Um, wow, just blown away by the graphics. I just got this two days ago and I needed to talk about it because first I noticed that there was some sort of a ban on it or people were trying to get people not to buy this game and I was kind of confused by that because uh frankly it just seemed like dumb I don't know I'm not that big into cancel culture and if a game is good play it if it isn't put this out there and say that this game is beautiful if I can get outside though and show you the outside I would like to do that it's beautiful outside as well as inside and there's also multiple uh structures on this campus so you're not stuck indoors all the time and uh, yeah I can I can get you outside let's go out these doors here whoa how sweet is that it, it, in terms of JK Rowling maybe check out uh, the episode I did on trans rights and things like that and then you'll see my positions on those uh, topics in the meantime uh, I really like uh, Harry Potter and the six movies. Um, I started playing the game and immediately saw, especially playing all the previous PS5 games, is a lot of them are um, continuations or just have occurred in, from previous consoles or previous uh, PC versions. And so you see the adaptation and just the graphics enhancements, but you also see some of that legacy design, video game design, that I'm not so keen on. Now, when I first launched this game, I noticed immediately, whether it's the control or the way you're interacting with the game, this is a brand new game designed for this console, PS5. And the interactivity, the graphics, the sound, everything is rich, beautiful and rich. The environments and uh, the, the way that the characters are talking to you, the, the, um, the way that the actors and the lip syncing as as far as syncing up with the the audio recordings is really good. I, it doesn't feel jarring at all and there it, because it's a role player game, there is a lot of characters talking to you uh, for a, a fair amount of at least the getting introduced to sort of the environment. Now, um, but I just got this game a day ago. I've been playing um Metro Exodus, and before that, I played through uh, Dead Space, which was awesome. Other games, which were a lot of them, were adapted from previous generation consoles or uh, PC games. This is a fresh start and a fresh look at a, a new game, new concept, and 
Uh, I'm just blown away by the graphics. And, you know, initially every game you start out, you have to adapt to their level of control and what you're allowed to do, whether you can run or jump or how you inspect objects. And the, the just the nuanced detail that's included in this game. Everywhere you go, there's some new detail and I feel like I'm missing so much uh, that, you know, when you pause and go through the collections of things that on the map um, and all the stuff that has yet to be explored, I've, I guess, explored, you know, 2% of the game, which is nothing. And I have some spells that I can cast, like uh, uh, first the power shot or whatever you want to call it, and then uh, what? Le Leviosa. Yeah. Leviosa. Yeah, there you go. And repair. repair. Nothing's broken, so that's not gonna work. And then I can do a Revelio. Revel. Hello, what's that? Well, nothing yet. So that that could be interesting. That is, apparently needs some further inspection. Anyway, I just want to put this. And of course, the frame rates are great. I'm not a frame rate snob. I don't need 120 or even 60, and I don't complain when. But if if I start to see shuddering or frame skips, I'm going to get pissed off, uh, or dithering in in the rendering. Um, but in the meantime, I haven't seen any of that. And the environments are beautiful. It's really well done. The control is really great. Um, and it, just every corner I turn. Now there's a little flicker there. What is that? It's just a rendering faux pas that they... Um, so much detail. Oh. Akio, Lumos. Levioso! Reparo! Yeah, it's not broken. Anyway, I have a quest over... I'm collecting these little balls of stink for this girl in this game. Whatever. But ah, look at that. That's just beautiful. Beautiful. I'm making everybody sick now. Now, as you're playing, you'll... You know, you can run and jump and all that. And you're starting to learn spells, at least I am. I've only been playing for a day, and I'm frankly, just for an hour or two, I don't have a lot of time to dedicate to gameplay. Uh, this seems like such a big world, and all of it crammed full of interactivity and sort of dynamic environments and uh, characters and places to explore and things that I haven't found out, puzzles to be solved. I am intrigued by this game. It was expensive. It was like $70 US. And there's just so much in the game as far as interactivity and things you can do. And the fact that this eyeball on this case is following me. And that's just one example. But you go through the entire uh, environment and there's just so much stuff. Well, let's get into it. And of course you can run. I'd better keep an eye on high places around the school for Zenobia's gobstones. That's my current quest, which is to find these stupid stones, but, you know. Uh, and this hall is huge. And there's, I think, four major buildings on the campus. And then you can run, and the, the halls are beautiful, just decorated in all sorts of ways. There's puzzles everywhere, so I am I just started playing two days ago, so I haven't figured out uh, how to unlock everything. But then you can go outside, and, you know, it's just a day in, and I'm just sort of getting my initial uh, spells and things like that, and... Um, you know, like that, or... Um, and this is hot off the presses. It just came out a few days ago, so of course it's going to be expensive. It'll drop in price, but right now it's very, very expensive. And you know what? 
I don't care because it's worth it. It seems like a great game. So do I recommend this game? I would give this game an A and not an A+, plus, but an A, which is damn good. Now, other games I would put in this sort of category of, of gameplay are something like uh, Dead Space, which I just got done playing, is awesome. Also, uh, Wreckfest, as far as car games, I loved that game, and I played the hell out of it. Um, as far as... What's another game? Oh, well, obviously uh, Demon Souls, but it's so frustrating. I'd give that game maybe a C plus because it's so frustrating having to restart at the beginning of a board every time you die and losing your life force and you know you whatever blah blah blah. Anyway, C plus for uh, Demon Souls, but Dead Space is probably a B plus. This is an A or an A minus. This is such a good quality game. It's beautiful. It's rich. Inside, outside, wherever you are, there's tons to look at and tons to explore. Um, and so that's my review. So I will see you guys in the next episode. Peace.